Yo, alright guys, so we're going to create some uh, explosive blood splats that you can use in your little indie films or whatever. Um, so I'll just talk you through it. We've just got like a, um, a meshed blood splat going on here. We're going to add some blood mist. I've created what I like to call like um, my splat box. So behind here we've got a splat box which basically just gives us like an interesting shape for the particles to come through and the reason I've got that in front of it is because we'll put like a surface shader on there so that when you come to render it all you're going to get is this effect coming out of here. Um, yeah so let's just get started and make something cool. Let's just start again from scratch uh, really quickly. Let's just go to here and let's just delete a few uh, faces faces maybe not that many that do and I'm just gonna hit free in a keyboard I'm just gonna grab some of these and just start moving them around a bit all over the show just to create a more sort of organic interesting shape almost like a gunshot wound as it were so it's going to drag that up like that so that's what we've got there now this is going to be an end mesh in a little while but an end mesh doesn't take into consideration um, uh, like a subdivision surface by hitting free so like, let me just show you if we just go to end dynamics and I'll go to end mesh and create passive collider um, hit 5. If I turn the solar display onto collision thickness, we can see that it's only taking into consideration the polygon that's there. Um, so we're just going to go off with that end mesh. Let's just remove end cloth. And let's hit 1 and we're just going to go to polygons, smooth. And I'm going to do that again. Now I'm going to go back to the end dynamics menu. I'm going to go end mesh. Uh, I'm going to create a passive collider and if I look at that now we can see that it's actually following the shape because it's poly. Okay, so now we've got that, let's just rotate it around and lift it up a bit. And you, you creating like a little splat box like this, you can create loads of different types of blood splats that you can just use in after effects and put them over the top of people or whatever. So let's just uh, extrude this out a bit. Um, like so there we go and uh, we got a little splat box going on right okay so now let's just increase the timeline a bit and we're just going to go into uh, end dynamics end particles we're going to go into uh, create an emitter and we're going to uh, make this a volume and make it a sphere we're going to hit apply and let's just for a minute just bring this over here so at the moment when I emit particles from this volume they're just going to all fall down from uh, from here but what we want to do is just have them all ejecting out of one side so we'll just go to the volume sweep inside the emitter and just sweep that around to about 180 all right and now we can pull that back inside here it's going to need to be a lot smaller because otherwise we're going to have particles flying all over the shop uh, so we'll start around here. I might make that volume sweep a bit less and just kind of line it up with our hole. And at the moment, the particles are still just particles are still just going to fall down. So we want them ejecting outwards. So we're going to have a bit of away from centre going on. So they're starting to push out now, and then we're going to have um, a long axis. Let's try that. Um, sorry, not a long axis. Let's just get that going. Directional speed. So let's just rewind and play. And let's just grab those particles because I can't see them very well. We're just going to go into the particle shape and we're just going to turn these to spheres. So we need to go into shading and turn them to spheres so we can see what we've got going on. Now obviously this is a constant uh, emission at the moment, which blood splat wouldn't do. So let's just go back to the emitter, and we're going to go down to zero at frame zero and set a key. I'm going to come forward one, two, three. 
Let's do that to about 600. Go change all this later. Set a key. Gonna go forward one frame. Set another key. So we've got 600 over one frame, and then go forward one two frames back to zero, and set another key. So now we're just gonna get a spurt of particles doing that. Now all we've got to do is push them through this hole. So let's just uh, play with the particle radius, just get that down a bit and that's going to help some of these particles come through a bit more. And I think I'm going to get that volume a bit closer to our hole. Twist it round a bit more. I think we can do better than that. That's a bit better. You're gonna get some land inside the box, which is why we created it, but it should get a bit more of an interesting look here. So I want a bit more directional speed on that. So back in the emitter again. Let's just crank the directional speed right up and see what we get. Let's go a bit further. Getting there. Let's just go mad. Go 20. That's too much. Still a bit too much. Yeah, that'll do. Right, so let's just go back, go forward a few frames. Let's just grab the particles and we're just going to go to modify, convert, uh, end particles to polygons. Not going to see anything until we bring the threshold right down. Let's just give that 0 0.5 and we're going to bring the triangle size down, but not too much. Keep bringing it down to about here. And the blobby radius scale, let's bring that down a bit. Let's smooth it off. Let's turn this into a cute tetrahedra so we don't get any holes. And let's just rewind and play it. Again. Right, so now I feel like I want a bit of motion streak on it. So let's go to the particles and we're just going to do a bit of motion streak. That's just going to give us, well, a bit of motion streak really. So they're exploding out still. And we'll just get the look a bit better by playing around with some of these settings. So it's just going to be a personal taste thing. You might want the triangle size to be bigger, but let's give that a go. Um, let's just rewind and play. It's not too bad. Still got quite a few particles inside there though. So let's just have a look at this. A long axis. So the directional speed, the direction is pointing over there. So. Sorry about that. Let's move the direction of this a bit over here. There we go. So now we should get everything coming out that way. There we go. I'm thinking that motion streak is looking a little bit too unreal. So we'll just go back and just bring that motion streak down a bit. And then I'm going to bring the triangle size up a bit just so everything's a little bit more crazy looking smooth it off and with the mesh selector we can hit free so that we get smooth bits so we've got all little chunks of flesh and everything going on there so that's not so bad and when we play that back faster it's just going to look fine so the next step is to create the blood mist so let's just give this a little shader first so we're just going to render in we'll stick a, a blin on there and we'll just make that red and we'll bring the darkness down a bit. Uh, hello, red. Let's bring the darkness down a bit. Let's get rid of reflections. Bring that down. Bring that down there. Right, 
so we've got some weird looking blood going on so next step let's go into the dynamics menu go into fluid effects and create a 3d container so let's bring that back about here and let's uh, increase the size here and here and let's put the resolution up to about 60 and you won't see a change until we rewind uh, I might put it up to about 80 okay so if I rewind the plane now we're not going to see any difference but if I select the mesh and we'll go to the outliner I'm going to select the fluid, select the mesh, I'm going to go to fluid effects, add edit contents, emit from object okay so now when this object comes out fluids are going to emit from it so let's rewind and play so we can see fluids coming out so now with the fluid selected still um, I'm going to go into the fluid shape, we're going to go into shading and we'll change the colour to red I'm also going to stick on self shadow um, we're just going to go into the contents details uh, we look at the density so this part's kind of up to you really how dense you want it so before we go any further let's just create our uh, map plane so let's just rotate that up to 90 degrees there bring that out to about here so this is going to be our map plane and we'll just stick like a surface shader on it so wherever you render from you're not going to see all this madness going on behind it obviously we'll have to set that up properly so let's just rewind and play so out comes the mist and the mist is hanging around too long so if we just select the mist, we'll give it some dissipation and some noise and some turbulence and that should help kind of get rid of it let's bring the buoyancy down a bit let's rewind and play because we really want that blood to just, that mist to kind of naturally go and just sort of dissipate over time, which it sort of is at the moment so if we come back here I'm just going to grab the fluid box uh, the container sorry I'm just going to go into display and in the boundary draw I'm just going to turn that to none and I'll just do a little play blast from this angle now so here we go blood splat with some mist and that we're going to render this with some motion blur so it all looks better and obviously the speed's not right so we could have sped it up a bit more but if I stick this up to 60 frames a second so you can speed it up in post but you know we could have done those particles coming out a lot faster in the first place that way the uh, the blood mist would have been a bit more believable but if we just go into V-Ray quickly we'll just get to a certain point just to see what everything looks like with motion blur so I'm just going to create a light uh, let's just go with a dome light for now I'm just going to make that invisible invisible uh, let's just open up the settings here and you can render this in mental ray or whatever you can uh, render with just play around with the settings we'll just go V-Ray and just drop me some questions on the comments if you don't quite know how to do it render it whatever so we could just hit render here with a bit of motion blur <clears throat> and there's some fluids there so it's not the fastest render but yeah it's not too shabby with a bit of motion blur and we would just take this into post grade it up maybe speed it up a bit um, probably should have sped those particles up in the first place um, but yeah that is how you do blood splats and obviously we can change the way it splats by just changing the shape of this changing the angle and just save off like multiple different versions of it to get different types of blood splats there you go guys uh, yeah that's it
nice one. See you later.